It's time to meet Clifton. With your host, Ray Grabowski. Here's Ray. Hi, welcome everybody to another episode of Meet Clifton. Um, we're back after a little bit of a recess, but we thank everyone for enjoying the episodes that have been aired over the past few months. Um, this is probably our fifth season back in and we're happy to be here. And I know we're looking forward to it and I'm sure a lot of people at home are looking forward to our, our guests. We have many good ones coming up. Um, tonight's gonna be a special episode. We're gonna discuss the past few months, what's going on. We have the superintendent of schools and um, the Board of Health is coming on and uh, John Paul Gorelick to talk about some legal aspects. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. Tonight's guests are Director of Human Services, John Beagle III, with Health Projects Coordinator, Jennifer Kidd. Superintendent of Schools, Danny A. Robertozzi. And John Pergarelli Jr. tells us a little bit about wills. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another episode of Meet Clifton. Okay, welcome to our first episode of Meet Clifton since we've taken off. I'm with us tonight, again, who was with us the very first show, is now back with us the very first show um, that we were back here, uh, Mr. John Beagle the third, our health officer and director of human services, Jennifer Kidd, both from Clifton Health Department. Uh, welcome and thanks for coming on the show. Thank we you. appreciate it. I know you guys are doing a lot. Um, we only hear good things, so, but we, like, we need a little update, you know, John, if you can, about the current status. Sure. Um, so, you know, people ask me, you know, what's going on, so glad you asked that to start the, the uh, questions. Um, you know, we see light at the end of the tunnel, but we're still in the tunnel, right? So, you know, we, if we still continue to do what we have been doing, right, uh, wearing masks, socially distance when necessary, um, get vaccinated, we should be getting to the end of that tunnel. Um, but just to like recap, over the last, you know, what, 14, 15 months, in New Jersey alone, we had 1 million cases, right? 1 million cases, this is just in New Jersey, and 25,000 COVID-related deaths. So if you think about 25,000, that fills up and overflows an arena down in North. It's a third of MetLife Stadium, uh, uh, attendance so a lot of people have died over, over this um, so it's it's you know it's crazy to think that last January we would be in this predicament but you know by doing what we were doing with contact tracing and the vaccines it probably prevented a lot more deaths so um, in Clifton we um, but on another good term yesterday our positivity rate uh, was 4.3. So that means 4.3% of the people that were tested yesterday uh, were positive, which is it's definitely a, a positive um, uh, thing for what we're going through. Um, in the city of Clifton, we were the 25th right now, the 25th in New Jersey City uh, as far as percentage of positive cases. Um, and, you know, it's... it's um, we put out something every week to publish how many people that you know were COVID positive and how many deaths. So as of May 8th, we had 12,022 positive cases and we had 253 COVID related deaths. So, um, and, and unfortunately people are still dying. We had, that's not even included with this, the other day we had someone 45 years old pass away. So we're still getting hospitalizations, we're still getting uh, deaths related to this, and um, you know, we have to continue the good fight, if you want to say. I mean, do you think the, the treatment has improved though since the first outbreak, right? Oh yeah, the tr I mean, listen, what we, not we, but everyone, you know, in the world, what we have done 
it is tremendous in, in reducing the amount of deaths. Right. But then you see what's happening in India and some other countries, right? I mean, so India is a plane ride away, right? Every, everywhere now is a plane ride away, and I think I said this last time. So we have to be vigilant. Okay, we have to be very vigilant on what's going on, not just in Clifton, not just the county, not just the state, not just the country, the whole world. We have to be vigilant. And that's what we're going to, you know, we've been doing. Right, and people, they can't get lax, even though they think, you know, Correct. you vaccinate. And I'm sure we're right. going to talk about that. Right. Actually, we'll talk. Um, so Clifton obviously has a drive-through, and Jen, you want to just give us a little thing about the clinics? Sure. Um, so we've been conducting a drive-through vaccination clinic um, since January 6th at Clifton High School. People um, have um, been very excited and pleased to have the drive-through option so that they don't um, have to come into contact with other people. Um, they don't have to be concerned about social distancing um, and issues like that with the drive-through. Uh, they can remain in their car the entire time, um, including during the vaccination process. Um, we have vaccine, well, we have administered um, almost 13,000 doses of vaccine since January 6th. We've had over 20 clinics at Clifton High School and we've taken the show on the road. Um, we actually vaccinated 40 residents and staff at Evergreen Manor. Um, they have several residents there who do not have vehicles and couldn't get to our clinic. Uh, we've also have gone down to Botany Village now twice. We did a walk-up clinic down there. Um, both clinics were very successful. And we also have been conducting homebound visits to people that are bedbound and can't get out of their homes. Um, so we've taken the show on the road. Now that the supply of vaccine seems to be more than the current demand, we've had to think outside the box. And we need to go where the people are and make it as easy as people, um, as easy for people to get vaccinated. And that's why we're doing these pop-up clinics throughout the city and we'll be doing more of those. Right, now, which, what, Moderna, whatever, I don't know, what are we using, Clifton-wise? The city of Clifton is administering the Moderna vaccine at our mass vaccination clinics. We uh, do have some limited doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, mm -hmm. um, and we have provided about 10 doses of those to residents that have uh, specifically asked for the J&J. &J. I mean, do you think as it moves on, it'll be like a choice where you could pick or choose at, that, at some point? The state actually issued um, guidance today uh, that um, if we can, we should allow residents to choose um, so that, again, we're making it as easy and convenient for people to get vaccinated. Okay. I, mean, I don't know the difference. I know one is a double shot. Right. Which the is Moderna the is two doses <laughs> right. um, separated by four weeks, 28 right. days. Um, Pfizer is also two doses separated by three Pfizer's weeks or 21 right. days. And then the J&J &J is, is one dose. Okay, so hopefully whatever will be available people be able to pick and choose. Can I just comment on yeah, sure. the, um, our mass vaccination clinic? Um, if you were to go to that, I mean, we were getting beat up in the beginning because we didn't have enough vaccine, right? <laughs> That's for um, sure. You know, one of the things I could do, uh, you know, if I had the superpowers, would be give enough vaccines to people in the beginning. Um, so we're getting beat up, but we have not had one complaint when people have gone to the high school because the entire staff has been professional and they realize people are having anxiety about oh, this, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. About, you know, what should I do? And, and they ask questions. We have nurses there. So, I mean, it's just been an unbelievable collaboration. And the city should be so proud of what is happening up there between the health department, IT, DPW, fire department, police department, um, the board of education nurses, CERT members. OEM, it's just been a, a collaboration that we have become one team. Right. Um, everybody picks each other up. There's no small job for anybody. If you need somebody, you know, we had an OEM person, whatever I need to do, we had them in the corner waving people by. Because you, every job that we have out there is important. Right. Whether it's the nurse vaccinating somebody, whether it's the person directing the traffic, very important. I know um, some people have gone through uh, how many people, like Jen said, and again, not one complaint about the No, I, to tell you the truth, I haven't heard any complaints, and even outside of Clifton, um, you hear how 
incredible Clifton's doing. So we're really proud of that. And, Outstanding. And we're yeah. a big city. So mm -hmm. to, to have this much professionalism uh, for this many people and, and keep it moving is it, pretty incredible. And the staff is still excited about doing it. Right, and you have a lot of volunteers too. People that volunteers, come volunteer. Yeah, you know, I bring donuts. Think. You know, we have individuals. Yeah, bring <laughs> cakes, cakes, all that stuff, all the fat. It's all important. All though. the good stuff. Of course, yeah. it's, all, it's all important. Um, let's talk about you know the next step, the kids. What is that coming up now soon? So the and age um, too, of course. Right. So the advisory committee on immunization practices, which is known as the ACIP. They are actually going to be um, meeting on Wednesday, May 12th. They're an external committee that advises the Center for Disease Control on vaccine practices um, and vaccine use in this country. Um, they are supposed to be um, making a decision and voting on approval uh, and making the recommendation to the FDA to authorize the vaccine for adolescents age 12 through 15. We do expect that authorization to go through and Vaccinating our 12 through 15 year olds could begin as early as the end of this week um, or the beginning of next week. The so same dosage? Yes, we believe it's going to be the same dosage. Mm -hmm. um, we Pfizer, are right, right. Pfizer. right. It's, it's just the Pfizer vaccine right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just going to be the Pfizer vaccine. Um, the vaccine trials have shown that the vaccine is extremely effective in this age group and that this age group um, has responded very well to the vaccine. Um, it is projected that the Pfizer vaccine will be authorized for two to 11 year olds yeah, I was gonna by ask September. Okay. We're hoping by September <clears throat> and then for six months and up, children age six months and six months and up, hopefully by the end of this year, by December. Okay. Um, everyone age six months and up will be able to uh, and receive I, the vaccine. I would think that maybe the dosage might be changed because of body weight or, or that, does that have any relevance? I, I, I haven't read I that yet. That. Yeah, okay. yeah. That, so. yeah, George. I got a question. Can we mandate this vaccine for the school for the kids going to school next year? Please. That's a billion dollar that's question. Yeah, I don't know if you could. That's not going to be answered here. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no. Can we get I mean, back to normal. Listen, part Colleges of our a lot of college and universities, are doing it, right? Yes. So. You know, a lot of all our other vaccines too are mandatory. Yeah. Um, there are some exemptions Correct. that are allowed, but um, you know, that that's going to be for the. Will that come into uh, one of the uh, uh, advisory committees, or you think it'll even be brought up? That would be um, that would be decided by each state. Each state has their own. Oh, okay. Yeah, immunization, probably be a state or federal um, thing because right. yes. you're talking about people's rights and yes. you know all of these different things. Um, so we're going to play a little fact or fiction <laughs> um, okay the first these are myths hopefully um, someone who has been infected with COVID-19 does not need to be vaccinated true or false 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 <laughs> false false right um, because so, of the antibody theory. right so the antibodies the, the CDC looks at it as somebody that has been infected is immune for 90 days so if they're if they're exposed to someone maybe on day 60, they don't have to be quarantined. But after day 90, they're considered totally unvaccinated, okay. et cetera. And can some people have the antibodies longer than others? This is my own question, or? Yes, uh, you know, uh, but 90 days is what the right. CDC okay. says is, you know, a lot of people don't even have it that long right after they get Right, it, it goes so. quickly. All right, so number two, COVID-19 can only be transmitted in cold climate. I came up with that one. Yeah, I don't know. That's not a good one. Um, <laughs> so, didn't work last although, summer. <laughs> right, our, our numbers are lower, right, in the summertime. That's what we saw last year um, because people are more out, outdoors, et cetera. But um, look at Brazil, what's going on, you know, yeah. Brazil. So you can still, it, it spreads in any type of climate. Right. And there's one everybody has. COVID-19 vaccines are unsafe because drunk companies created them quickly. Meaning that is they false. said they didn't pass the right. FDA. That and, is false. Uh, that's right. false. Because we're in a global pandemic, drug companies did have to act quicker right. um, to get something um, so that we could um, avoid all of the uh, illness and death that we were seeing. Um, and they spent a lot of time and a lot of money developing these vaccines. But corners were not cut. Um, phase three vaccine trials were done with the same number of people that phase three vaccine trials are done with with regular vaccines 
Um, and they have still gone through the strict studies and the stringent protocol that is required um, by the FDA. Right. Um, and they've been authorized by the FDA. I think the name scared people, Operation Warp Speed. Yeah, yeah no. Right? So I think <laughs> they that kind of scared a few people. The best yeah, because right? there's a lot of variables right. here. There was politics and, and this and that. And, um, but the thing is, people have been being vaccinated for quite a long time. And there really hasn't been major adverse effects. You know, you're always going to expect something like anything else. You, you vaccinate five million people and you have one or two things, you probably would have had that end. You have that with anything. You give a penicillin shot, there's always going to be someone. Uh, which brings you right. up to um, right. someone has allergies. So can they still get the COVID vaccine or is that up to the doctor? How does that work? So if, if somebody has an allergy to an ingredient, in these mRNA vaccines, that that is a concern, especially if they've had an anaphylactic response, which is when the, the throat closes up. But if somebody has um, a food allergy, an animal allergy, uh, allergy to pollen, that doesn't mean that they can't get vaccinated against uh, COVID. They can definitely get vaccinated. Um, some people prefer to get vaccinated in a healthcare setting like a hospital rather than a drive-through yeah, if they've had, right, if right. they've had an yeah. anaphylactic response. But it does not mean that you cannot get vaccinated with these vaccines right. against and COVID. And what we do with our consent form is we have a list of questions. If they answer no yeah. to any of the questions at our registration, we have two nurses and they'll talk to them. If any other, you know, any other concerns, they'll reach out to our medical director, Dr. Cowell or uh, Barbara Lesniak. Our and you have a time provider. period too after they get the shot. There's a, a a proper amount of time that they had a reaction, they would have it within right. 15, 20 minutes, hopefully. Right. We have um, an observation area at the clinic. That's the last stop at our mm -hmm. drive-through. Um, if you don't have any history of, of allergies, you're in a 15 minute wait in the observation area. And if you do note on your paperwork that you've had a history of allergies, then we observe you for 30 minutes and then we release yes. you. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the big question, um, reopening of New Jersey. You know, we hear Florida's this, California's that, but we're only concerned about New Jersey. So whatever you can tell us about that at this point. Well, you know, the governor has easy restrictions that are coming up, right? Um, and what we saw last year around the same time and I have in my hand the chart that, or the bar graph, and I say, always say a picture uh, is a thousand words, right? And Last year, the number of cases that we have now compared to last year are about the same. Really? So we're hoping that, you know, with the vaccines and, the th you know, the things that we have done, you know, the step, social distancing, right. mask wearing, um, the numbers will continue to go down. Um, and in the summertime, it won't be, it'll be like last year, right? Maybe even less than right. last year. Um, so the outdoor gatherings are definitely better than indoor gatherings, right? Um, but it's a wait and see because yeah, we have to you see, know. you know, all the restaurants now are going to be 100 percent capacity as long as they have six feet distance between. Right. And they have either dividers or something like that. Um, large venues, right, weddings, etc., cetera, um, where people tend to dance. And we have seen the last year that a lot of parties have caused a lot of the spread of the virus. Right. And we've had a few uh, weddings that we had to follow up on. And people, you know, some people were mildly sick, some people were really sick, and some people were hospitalized. So, you know, it's gonna be a wait and see. Um, but the outdoor gatherings, that's, you right. know, that's better than indoor. Like and I'm say. thinking, that what I, my take on this is they're saying you're allowed um, full capacity indoors. So let's say it's 150, but it has to be six feet. Right. So I would think you would take the square footage right. of the building and divide it by whatever it takes to find out that might be, but if this one, like it might be one ten. different version of six feet, right? There should be only one version of right. six feet, but there's a lot right. of Right, but it should be square footage. Feet. How many people and six right. feet, and that's how it should be so determined. We had, but you know, last year we did go out there and measure, but you know, as we leave, tables tend to expand maybe. For yeah, that yeah. Year, for that so Everybody interprets it differently. Exactly. And enforcement, but we're hoping for the best. Um, yep. John, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I hope this clears up a lot of things. I know we take. I know you're busy seven days a week, you guys. I know the Board of Health has been the most overworked resource here, but everyone's chipped in, and, and I know that you know you're doing a great job, and we thank you. Um, and I'm sure Clifton thanks you. So uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Hello, Clifton and friends. Welcome to the updates. I'm Sharon Corbanix. I'm so happy to be back here after a long recess. So hope everybody is staying healthy and well. Just wanted to give you some updates. The Memorial Day Parade in Clifton is happening on Memorial Day. So please come out and support the people who put the parade together and the people that are participating in the parade. And also as a heads up, the Theater League of Clifton will be having Jesus Christ Superstar. We will have the special guest, Mark Peterson, who is the president of the Theater League of Clifton to give you all the details about Jesus Christ Superstar. So that's another fun event to look forward to. And also, if you have any special events you'd like us to announce, now things are opening up please contact the Clifton station so that we are aware of the event, the date, the time, and all the details. We would be happy to announce that for you. I want to give a shout out to the city of Clifton and the way that they did the health department, had the vaccines rolling. It was so well organized, so caring, and it really worked out very, very well. So Clifton does care about everybody. We want to keep you safe and healthy for a long time. And we do appreciate you tuning in. Until next time, we'll see you around town. And thank you again for your time. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we have with us the superintendent of schools, Dr. Robitosi, um, with us again today. Welcome and thanks for coming on. Great to be here, uh, Ray. Thank you. I have so many questions because I don't really understand what's going on with the school system. And I hear every day. So. Thankfully, um, he's going to explain it to us. But my first question, where are we here? Are we a virtual? Are we in school? Half a day's? I have no idea. Yeah, so, well, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm oh, happy to be here. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate that. Um, school's in session. Okay. Um, believe it or not, school's always been in session. It's The buildings may have been closed for a while, but school's always been in session. So uh, in New Jersey, um, we have to give parents the option to keep their kids virtual. So we have about um, 55 to 60 percent of our students in Clifton uh, have chosen the virtual option and that has gone up throughout the year. Uh, but when we return to in-person learning we uh, we're on what's called a hybrid schedule. So at the secondary level at the middle school and high school our kids are on an A-B schedule and Wednesdays are virtual and then at the elementary level the students attend school four days a week and Wednesdays are virtual. So we're back in school but uh, perhaps most importantly uh, I can't wait until September when I expect us to be fully operational back to what we consider normal schedule uh, full-time uh, I can't wait for that day. Right. Is that a possibility in September? I believe it's a I think it's more than a possibility I think okay. it's happening. And let uh, me just ask you my own edification if a parent still doesn't want to send this child is that is that going to be an issue or they have to so you know what I'm saying? right what now if, I know exactly what okay. you mean right now um, unless the governor changes okay. uh, the governor has said there will be no remote option okay. for next school year okay so it's you're gonna have to come back to school now uh, from my experience <laughs> in the last year <laughs> The governor and uh, has said things that have then been retracted and right. policies have come out that have then changed and that happened a lot. So uh, barring a mandate from the State Department of Education, um, we do not expect any of our students to be remote in September. Okay. Well, and that's good. Because, that's a very good thing. You know, from my opinion, you know, the children being out of school this long, you know, there's a socialization process. Uh, the parents have to be home. There's, there's a lot of variables here. Um, I'm sure you know there's a lot of challenges, and yep. I don't know how many, what success stories came out of this event. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, one of the things that I think uh, is a success, it's not the way you wanted to achieve it, but we've learned so much about technology in the last year. Um, our students have been able to demonstrate things virtually that they never had the opportunity to do before and never needed to do before. Right. That's a skill that's going to stay with them for the rest of their that's life. That's true. You know, same thing with our teachers. Uh, while the vast majority of our teachers had, you know, technology skills, they really had to adapt, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, in the moment and change their their pedagogical skills overnight. And I think that's that's a success story. That 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 we were able to change our modality of teaching overnight. Um, and for some of our students, they really excelled with virtual learning. That's what I was going to ask. How, how was the curriculum? Was it being able to follow per grade year? 
So the, we did modify the curriculum uh, based on, on timing, right. uh, based on what was covered. We wanted to make sure that we covered the major components of the curriculum. Okay. Uh, you keep hearing uh, in, in the news about this topic, uh, you keep hearing about learning loss. Yeah, Students are going to have a learning behind, loss, falling level, behind. Right. And I think that's a misnomer. Okay. I, I don't think that's happened. I think kids have learned different things. And I think we've been able to cover a lot of the major content. But I think most importantly, when our students get back in September, our teachers are professionals. They're going to be able to find out where the uh, students may be lacking in content skills and fill in those gaps. Yeah. The thing I've been worried about most, more than academics, is that social part that you mentioned earlier, yeah, the social about that emotional part. They lose a year of their life. Socialization, well, that's a big part of school. Yeah, um, it is. It's it's. And it's not, I'm not just talking about making friends, I'm talking about having people to talk to, about having an adult that's there for you, having people that, that care about you there every day. We don't know what our children's home lives are. Right, right. that's true um, too. But we know what they're going to get when they come to school every day. Right. So we were speaking about socialization and um, the kids missing out on good parts of their life and the camaraderie with children. Uh, I think, you know, maybe you could explain that more. What are they missing out on? For the most part. Well, I think it's those connections. I think students are missing connections to their peers, to adults that they know care about them. Right. I'm not saying that their parents don't care about no, them. No, Obviously, no, they do. But, um, you know, it's nice to go to a place every day where you're cared about, where you know that you're going to have a you're going to have lunch, you're going to have a hot meal. Um, not every kid uh, has that at home. Not every kid right. has a, an environment at home that is as nice as school is. And right. so that's part I was very worried about when we first shut down over a year ago. Uh, what about those kids who really, school was the best place they were all day? That's true, because some parents both work, sure. some don't have siblings, sure. um, so they're alone. School was, no, I understand, I know what you're saying. Um, and actually, so that leads me to my next question, the activities, the year-end activities, like IE, senior prom, graduation yeah are we doing these things so those students the the class of 2020 unfortunately really missed out they lost yes. yeah they lost out. they really missed out i mean we had as many uh we had as many virtual things as we can do but that yeah, couldn't yeah. replace not, what no it's not the what, same. what we had so i'm very happy to, to say that uh we will be having um the the vast majority of those big activities at the end of the year we're going to have a graduation Okay. We're going to have an outdoor graduation with all of our students uh, based on the new outdoor limits that were published by the, by the governor. Uh, we're going to be able to do that at Clifton Stadium. Uh, we're going to have all the students on the field. Right now it's going to be two tickets per parent. Uh, that may change uh, if the guidelines change a little bit, but we're, we're just pleased that we're able to do that. Right, it's nice. Uh, we're going to have a senior prom. Wow. We're going to have a senior prom. We have uh, uh, a place uh, that's been selected. It's a, it's a large enough place that will fit our students. And uh, thankfully, with the governor's uh, loosening the restrictions based on the number of cases, we're able to do a, a, a senior prom this year. And I'm so thankful that the kids are going to get to experience that. That's, yeah, because that's, that's just you, that's one, one of those once-in-a-lifetime yeah. things. They look, too, they look forward to that yeah. prom. Yeah. For better or for worse, they're going to remember that senior prom. Yeah. Yeah. Like no tomorrow. That's exactly right. And it's just a, it's a, it's a rite of passage. Yeah, sure. And now we'll be doing, you know, fifth grade promotion ceremonies and, and things like that. A lot of things that the kids didn't get to do last year. So I'm really okay. happy we were able to do that this year. So hopefully in time, we'll be on track. Now, very important, like on April 20th, the city voted two to one in favor of passing the district-wide referendum, which was millions of dollars given by the, the government, plus matching it with tax dollars. So just give us a little basis on what we're well, going to expect from this referendum I, being passed. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ray. I, I cannot thank the citizens of Clifton enough for voting to approve that referendum uh, by a two to one margin, yeah, by the way. It's pretty amazing. So it was a $168 million referendum to improve our schools. Uh, but one of the biggest selling points of the referendum was that $55 million of that 168 will come from the state because it was passed through a referendum. 
And this money will be used over the next three years to upgrade all of the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems at every school. Uh, we'll be putting in new technology and security cameras and new door locking mechanisms at every school. We'll be putting in new security vestibules at the entrances to each school. Uh, we'll be putting in a new uh, field at uh, Woodrow Wilson Middle School, which is currently our varsity, uh, varsity baseball field. Long, long yeah. overdue if you've ever seen that field, oh, yeah. and I know, I know you have. Uh, but it's going to be not only a field, it's going to be a field house. There's going to be a, uh, it's going to be a place that not only our athletes can use, but also our students at Woodrow can use for phys ed right. classes and other activities. And it's going to be open to the community for various activities uh, for the, you know, uh, the recreation department that wants to uh, utilize the facilities for their, for their rec programs and things like that. We're also renovating every single bathroom in the district. Um, very few of our facilities, <laughs> really, are, a lot of our facilities are 100 years old. Hey, but Ori this original, is original to the building. <laughs> Why? Well, when you have your, your meetings, that bathroom down there is Origi old. original to the building. <laughs> yeah, they're old. Yeah. They're <laughs> and, 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 and old is okay, but even with being maintained very well, um, Many of them don't work. They need repair. We spend constant money on repairing them, and they're not accessible. Well, for, so ADA for many of them. Yeah, the ADA compliant. You know, they're not of, ADA compliant. So all of our school entrances will be ADA compliant. All of our restrooms will be ADA compliant. Um, and that, that heating, ventilation, uh, and air important. conditioning piece is huge. Yeah, because it's so huge. With the climate change in this world, um, you yeah. know the summers get pretty hot. Yeah. Um, well, so, listen, when you talk about schools and you talk about learning, the first thing kids need when to, to learn is they need to feel safe. Right. And then you know what else helps? Yeah, to comfort. be comfortable. comfortable. <laughs> right? and then, sure. And you know what? Helps our teachers too. Sure. And you know, a lot of kids are you know, afflicted with asthma things nowadays. Yeah. There's allergies. A lot more so than uh, back when. So it, this, is, this is a good thing. And, um, it's a health and safety yeah, issue. Yeah, health and safety. And uh, hopefully this will be implemented soon. Thank God you're on board to see this through. And hopefully in three years. Uh, and with, with COVID being out of the way, we should be on track, I hope. Your lips to God's ears, right. Ray. Well, I appreciate you coming on. You're thank very you. welcome. Shake and thank hands you. we're still doing the pump. We're still thing, doing the pump. Thank okay. you for having thank me. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, I appreciate uh, it. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome. We have our special guest, which is Mark Peterson, who is Hi. the president of the Theater League of Clifton. So, Mark, what is happening now? Well, we're very excited to do another outdoor concert. Mm -hmm. After the success of our concert in September doing show tunes in Weaselbrook, uh, we had over 200 people in attendance there. Mm -hmm. We're going to repeat uh, a show there, and it's going to be the rock mm -hmm. opera Jesus Christ Superstar. Excellent. It's going to be a huge show. Mm -hmm. We have 30 cast members. Wow. Uh, we have a five piece orchestra. Oh, very nice. A big uh, endeavor. Five Clifton uh, residents are in the cast. <gasps> Very nice. And uh, we're very excited about it. The uh, show dates are June 4th and 5th, mm -hmm. 11th and 12th. The tickets go on sale May 17th. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Just around the corner to get your tickets. $15 for the tickets this mm -hmm. time because we have to, this is going to be a fundraiser for us because we're getting back on track, mm -hmm. staging our main stage productions, which is going to be in the fall, and we're going to hopefully do something at Mario's. Mm -hmm. So the money that we uh, receive from the show is really going to be towards presenting these next two shows coming up. So hopefully it will be a success. Okay. Um, and how will you handle uh, the seating? Is well, it's going to be blankets and chairs. Okay. It's going to be blankets and chairs. We're hoping the weather cooperates. Mm -hmm. uh, we were lucky last September the weather was cooperating with us in June. We hope is a good okay. month too. And you'll have a rain date? Just we're going to have case? a rain date. Okay. People, they make reservations. If anything happens on those days, we are going to accommodate people for a rain date that Sunday. Okay. The shows are going to be Fridays and Saturdays. So we're going to accommodate uh, people on that that Sunday of that mm -hmm. those two weekends. Okay. So uh, we're appreciative towards um, the Passaic County Board of Commissioners and the City mm. of Clifton for uh, sponsoring this show, and we're very grateful to them. If people want to uh, call our box office, it's 973-928-7668. Mm -hmm. Leave a message and your phone call will be returned. Okay. Uh, you can either send a check as well to Theater League of Clifton, Post Office Box 4072-07012. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and just remember, if you pay by credit card, there will be a $2.50 charge. Okay, sure, that's understandable. And also go to the theaterleagueofclifton.com website, and you can um, pay online, and um, your receipt will be um, printed out. You can re uh, print out receipt at home and present okay. that at the park. So we're very excited about it. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. The Weasel Brook Park has been done over. They spent a lot of money redoing the park. Nice. It's a beautiful venue. Mm -hmm. It's in front of the uh, historic home there on the hill, mm, which is a beautiful background mm -hmm. uh, setting. And the bathrooms will be open for us there, so people will have the venture and uh, into the park. Convenience, OK. So we're very excited about right. it. Very nice. And how long did it take you to get the whole endeavor together? Well, uh, you know, everything today is the rights. Uh, we were uh, trying to obtain okay. rights for a show that we felt that would appeal to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to obtain the rights. The director that we're using for the first time mm -hmm. Uh, she, Lisa Descoli, oh. she um, has done the show before. Oh, beautiful. So, which Experience is wonderful. Helps. So, sure. she had a, she's uh, bringing uh, yeah. a wonderful stage manager with us, a mm -hmm. wonderful musical director. We have mm. a choreographer coming from New York. Ooh, very nice. We have a costumer. Uh, the leads are unbelievable. We beautiful. even had somebody coming from New York to audition for the show. So Very the word is that people are anxious to get back into acting and they're also anxious to see live performances again. Sure. And you always do such a great professional job Thank with you. any of your endeavors. It Thank really you. comes off really well. And Thank of you. course, we will have the flyer uh, intermittently on the Clifton Channel. On so the Clifton Channel. You can and, watch um, it and get all the details there as well. There's a full page ad in uh, the Merchant, Maze oh, uh, Clifton excellent. Merchant. So mm -hmm. pick up a copy. We have a full page ad there, and you can get all the information from there. Okay, great. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody. No, I know you won't be disappointed. It's going to be a fantastic right. show. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's a, a classic and a great place to be. Weaselbrook Park is at 770 Park Drive, right in Clifton. So uh, it's easy to get to, plenty of parking. So yes. bring your blanket and your chair. And and hopefully it'll be a, a pleasant <laughs> evening under the stars. Yes, and of course, if it does rain, unfortunately, there is a rain date. So yes. it will happen no matter what. So thank you again, You're Mark. Welcome. It's always so good to thank see you. Thank you so much for supporting us. And thank us. you for entertaining Clifton. We look forward to it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. OK, welcome back. Uh, we have with us tonight a uh, gentleman that's been with us uh, many times speaking about legal things. And tonight, uh, I'd like to welcome John Paul Gorelick, Jr. Hey, John, how are you? Thank you for having me, Ray. Oh, it's OK. Um, you know, today's day and age with all of the problems going on, and it's very challenging times. Uh, so last minute, we get stuck with things. Um, so, you know, we want to know, we're going to talk about wills. Sure. OK? Because right now, you have to have your life in order. So, um, you know, why is it very important, especially now, to have your life in order? Start with will. Sure. Well, a will by definition sets forth what assets are in your name at the time of your death and how you want those assets to be distributed. Very important. Uh, the will becomes public record at the time of death and when the will is offered for probate. Right. So that's very important because many people have changes in their, in their lifetime. They can make changes to their will at any time. Uh, once someone passes away, that will is offered for probate and it becomes public record. Right. Now, does power of attorney, that supersede, the will supersedes power of attorney? Correct. A uh, power of attorney really I'm, is where... Know, people, I like to... Yeah. yeah, by definition, the power of attorney uh, names an individual who's going to handle your financial affairs. So that includes banking, investing, uh, filing income tax returns, uh, selling real estate. It's very broad-based. But most importantly, the power of attorney ceases upon the death of the principal. Okay. And then the will will control when that's offered for probate. So that person no longer has any control over that. Person with the of power of attorney, think it does. yeah, no. You know, I think power of attorney, they take care of the will too. And, and I know that's. It ceases upon death. Okay. It's, 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 so if the person's on their name on a bank account as a power of attorney, that ceases. And then you look for the will to see who the, uh, the appointment of the executor is going to be right. and who's going to be in charge of handling right, the estate. Because the executor comes. Right. OK, that makes sense. Um, now, I know because, you know, the COVID and people get sick and they, they were stuck at home and thinking, gee, I don't have a will. Mm -hmm. Could they have handwritten something? I mean, it's not it's a morbid topic, but. You know, if you weren't prepared and you're saying, geez, 
something might happen. Could they, could they handwrite a will? Yeah, that's a very good question. If the material provisions of the will are in the handwriting of the decedent and it's signed by the decedent, then that will, it's called a holographic will, can be admitted under certain circumstances. But I'd recommend as a practical matter that a person goes to an attorney, have the will prepared, it'd be witnessed by two individuals, and notarized in full compliance with the law. So yes, uh, a handwritten will can be admitted under some circumstances, but uh, but that that's subject to a court's review and everything. If you if you have a, a will that's witnessed properly by two individuals and then notarized, uh, that's offered for probate to the surrogate and then usually accepted unless it's being challenged. Right. And you know, I was going to ask you that question too. Um, the will comes out and it's read and someone contests it. Yes. What does that actually mean? Because the will's there and it's all written out, but a family member shows up out of nowhere and says, no, this was promised to me. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with something like That's, this? It's a really good question. Well, four months from the date of the judgment for probate, the date that the surrogate accepts the will, any aggrieved individual um, can challenge the will under specific circumstances. Now, in, for simplicity purposes, you can challenge it under undue influence, saying uh -huh. that you unduly influenced the testator uh, through duress, duress yeah. or constructive means to try to convince that person to leave something to somebody else instead of you. Uh, capacity, that's another big issue. Uh, if someone lacks the testamentary capacity to sign a will and maybe is uh, very frail and weak, uh, those are grounds that can uh, invalidate a will. Uh, if there's a mistake, if someone thought that they were signing something uh, and it turned out to be a document that was presented to them and uh, due to illness or if they were blind, uh, that the wrong document was presented. So different grounds okay. such as undue influence, a lack of capacity, mistake, or unfortunately you have the grounds of fraud when someone perpetrates a fraud and willingly puts a document in front of you and then right. convinces you to sign it. So yeah, four months from the date of the judgment for probate, a will can be challenged okay. and then it's litigated and the, the superior court judge entertains the matter as a probate action uh, the way other matters are litigated in court. Right. So Hypothetically, someone has a will and they pass away and they present the will all of a sudden someone comes up with the will that was signed a week before the person dies. Yes. That someone could would contest that. Yes. Because that's the You look to the later date, which was the later later right. uh, will, and that would normally control. However, if the person commences an action saying that will was signed under suspicious circumstances, right. then that can be invalidated by the court. Yeah, it, I'm it's a, a week, viable action. Yeah, a week or two, a person's sick and all of a sudden they change their will. Right. I don't know if that's duress. I'm, I don't know what the technical term is. To but duress or undue influence. Undue influence. Okay. Fraud. And I'm sure that happens. It does. You know, it does. You know how it is. No one knows anyone until the will. But the <laughs> interesting thing is that the, the time true. frame the time frame for challenging will is just four months. It's a small window of time. Right. It's not like two years if it's an auto accident I or see. something. Right, right. It's a very small window of time. Fortunately, under the probate process, the heirs are notified as a matter of law that a will has been offered okay. for probate, so they will have time to contest if necessary. Okay, and uh, I know there's new laws that reduce inheritance since estate taxes? Yeah, yeah. Recent? Very, very, very recent in the last couple of years. First of all, um, the, the federal estate uh, tax threshold is 11.7 million. So that means your first 11.7 million dollars of assets tax, tax, tax free wow. uh, for federal estate tax purposes. In New Jersey, effective January 1st, 2018, the New Jersey estate tax was repealed, so it's null and void now, so it's, it's off the books. So the only tax return you have to worry about now in New Jersey for small estates is an inheritance tax return. But fortunately, if you're a mother and father and leave everything to your children and grandchildren, that estate is tax-free because they're Class A beneficiaries and they're not taxed. The uh, people that are in the, the tax brackets would be, let's say, a brother, who would be with an 11% tax okay. and the first 25,000 exemption, or cousins, nieces, nephews, friends, 
they're in a 15% tax bracket. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, it does vary for inheritance tax purposes. That the major change was the repeal of the estate tax. Yeah, because that was a lot of people's a lot of money. Yeah, originally that would that would affect the states over 675,000. Then the threshold went up to about 2 million in 2017, but by 2018 it was repealed and there have been no ind indications in uh, Trenton that it's going to be resurrected anytime soon. Okay, that makes sense. And and the last last thing I want to cover here is just living well cuz I don't completely understand. Sure, it. basic yeah. terms with living will, that's the legal document where someone makes a declaration of what provisions they're gonna make for their health care uh -oh. if they're not in a position to make decisions themselves due to in, incapacity or illness. And it's very important because what they name in that living will is a medical power of attorney who has the authority to consult with your treating physicians and medical emergency providers if you're not in a position to act for your yeah. Right. So it's, it's very critical these days because emergencies happen. Yeah, absolutely. You, you have these documents, the will, living will, power of attorney done, filed away. You let your loved no ones know where they are. And if necessary, they could be utilized, you know, in, in emergency purposes. Okay. And I mean, that's good to know, especially now with everything going on. Um, you want to have your house in order. Absolutely. And, and I guess in your favor is you really should have it done professionally um, to make sure, that, you know, the, the I's and T's or whatever it's called. Dot the I's and cross the T's, yeah, yes. because like you said, you don't want to have anything changed or someone say this isn't right. So, I mean, it's just, I know people don't like to have wills done when, especially when they're younger, because they think, at least I, I haven't gotten mine yet, so. You think you're, because <laughs> you think something's, you know, you're afraid. It's a superstition. But yeah, but even if you're young, it's important to have a will it because is. if you have minor children, you can name a guardian and a trustee in that will. And uh, that, that would be in, in involved if there's a common disaster with husband and wife or the, the second spouse That's true. perishes. That's true. Uh, you're naming already in the will who's going to be caring for your young children should something happen. Right. Yeah, th that's important. So all of these things are important. I mean, I hope we got a small education here, but it's good to get your house in order. And John, I appreciate once again coming well, on. Well, thank you. Um, thank you for thank having you very me. much. Um, very informative. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll be right back. Okay, well, that's our show for tonight. I'd like to thank all my guests for being on. Of course, my co-host George is still with us. I'm so After happy we're years. back. Same hat. Same hat, but, but I'm happy to be here. Good. And, and I'm glad you're back. I'd like to thank the cast and everyone that's helped out. And hopefully moving forward, we're going to have a lot of great shows to come. But in the meantime, be good to your friends and family. Respect your neighbors. Keep Clifton close to your heart. This is a great city. Thank you. God bless. And good night.